operations as Equinor's 30 megawatt high wind Scotland floating offshore wind farm had been inter- interrupted for up to four months uh, for heavy maintenance on the turbines. Uh, operational data has shown the need for the work on the Siemens Gamesa turbines that have been operating for about seven years off of Aberdeen. They are uh, SWT 6.0154 machines. Uh, the turbines will be towed to Wergland Port in Norway this summer, where maintenance will be done by the Wergland Group. Uh, this is the first heavy maintenance operation for a floating wind farm. Uh, towing the turbines to shore is it, the simplest way. This is the, one of the beauties of having a floating wind farm is you can tow the turbines in and out. What we don't know right now is what they're going to repair. And they think it's going to take a couple of months for the repairs to occur. That screams out to me, bearings, gearbox, drivetrain, probably not blades, right? Or It's rotating equipment. Gearbox would be the easy one, but it's got to be something drivetrain related, right? To do three or four months, it means bearings? I'm hearing it's the, the main bearings. And it's probably due to a lot of the off-axis loading that you're getting because the, the tower is kind of flopping around on the floating platform in ways that I mean, they obviously design it with natural frequencies and everything in mind, but it's it's you know still getting a lot of off-axis loads on, um, you know, on the the turbine that probably weren't anticipated at the the levels they probably actually been seeing. Well, we've been talking about this uh, with floating wind here on the show for a while. It's always it's been a concern. Any any engineer floating, you know, naval architect, structural engineer is going to see that there's if you're going to use basically the same. Uh, bearings or anything that's been used onshore or in a fixed bottom offshore, that's not going to take the same loads. It's because you're now you're in, you're introducing a few other degrees of freedom on these things. And when you're in the freaking North Sea, we've all seen the videos of what the North Sea does in the wintertime. It's pitching and rolling. That thing is angry and ugly and nasty, right? So those things have been bouncing around out there for six, seven years. Um, you know, th- th- I, I read an article by a, a friend of mine at the at New York, uh Insurance, but it's a Norwegian hull club thing. And they were talking about making sure that you have tow to port for all of these uh, issues built into your business model. And, you know, normally six years, you're not changing out bearings and things like that. But this is the first long term deployment of an offshore floating wind farm in the world. You know, and as and as we do more of these offshore floaters and if there's adjustments and things, better, we got to understand we've been talking a lot about the fleet for installations. Yes, that's there. However, now if you're going to start being dragging turbines all over the place. Now you're talking about anchor handling tugs and the availability of those. There's a lot of moving parts here. So this is this is where I want to understand this uh, tension leg platform bit, right? So in PES Wind Magazine, on the latest issue, there's an article by Eco TLP. And when I saw the high wind issue, I thought, okay, so maybe the tension leg platform can reduce some of the movement, as which is what it sounds like. And the article is really good, but You know, I'm an electrical engineer. I'm not a mechanical engineer. I'm not an offshore engineer. But it does seem like these tension lake platforms are a way to reduce some of the the movement so you don't wear out the the rotating pieces of these turbines, right? Isn't that the logic? Yeah, but TLPs by by design are deep water units. And the reason is is okay, for every every meter of tension leg, you can expect X amount of freedom of movement, right? So if you're trying to install install one of those in 150 meters of water, it's too rigid. It will bam, bam, like it won't work, right? Or you'd have to have the TL, the, t- the actual fiber tensioners would have to be so loose that it would bounce around anyways. So a TLP is better suited for three, 5,000 meter water depths, even into 2,000 meter water depths. Uh, where, whereas I think high wind is not, not nearly that deep. I think high wind is only like 120, 150 meters of water. So is there a problem in being in that depth of water that there's no way to try to control the amount of bobbing and weaving that the turbines are going to do? Yeah, you're in the you're in that middle thing where you can't quite get a, you know, it's too expensive to put in a jacket because you can build a jacket that's freaking 500 meters tall easily. It, it's done all the time, but they're so expensive. Then it's like, why are we doing this? It makes no sense. So after you get to a certain depth, the jacket doesn't make sense. But you can't put a monopile out there in 150 meters of water. Because it's going to be a 250 meter long monopile. Like, it, you're not going to do that. So, is there a solution for this, or is it just building the turbines more robust to handle the loads 
uh, the offset loads that are going to happen. There's a couple of solutions, right? There's different technologies you can do for for floating concrete um, spars and and different things on the surface. It's just which design do you go with, right? There's the the X1 wind platform, and there's the this platform, and there's the that platform, and the T Omega or whatever. There's all kinds of different ideas. If you're wearing out the bearings in these turbines, aren't you then putting a lot of stress in the blades? It seems like that would be, it's just like you're wearing out a bearing in an engine. You wear out the bearing in an engine, and then all, this, all the attached pieces start to wear because things are not working like they should. Is, is that the, the, the real concern? Is like you can replace bearings, not fun, but you could do it. You start damaging blades or something bigger, towers even, you're really in trouble. If this weren't a floating platform, this would be a monstrously expensive thing to have to fix. Remember what happened with the Vestas V93 megawatt in Denmark? They had to change out the main bearing because it was basically an onshore turbine taken and put in an offshore environment, never designed for an offshore environment, as Joel mentioned earlier. And they literally had to change out the main bearings after like two years or something, three years. Um, and they had to do it on hundreds of turbines. It cost Vestas millions of dollars. 